All right, all right. Welcome back to the show. Today we got a fun episode. We're going to dive into Jake Paul's anti fund. In lieu of Jake Paul's fight this week, they're actually saying it's one of the most anticipated and pre ordered pay per views of all time, which is absolutely insane. So we were looking into it. Jake Paul actually, a little bit ago, announced he's launching a fund with one other partner. It's gonna be an early stage venture capital fund. We're gonna dive into all of it in this episode today. It should be pretty fun. Now, by way of announcement, you guys know every month we do a giveaway to one of our, the best comment and subscriber we have for the month, best one we can find. So today it goes out to Eleanor, Eleanor space, (laughs) Eleanor. And he says, this is Bridger win, I hit 10 million. I don't want the sneaker. I want the whiteboard of truth and justice with the IFS team autograph on it. Eleanor, I love it. As you guys know, we give away shoes. If people hit $10 million, they get a custom pair like of sneakers and that floats on a shooting. Usually in the studio, we have a floating shoe in the background. And then the whiteboard of truth and justice. Today, we don't have that, but I love it. Eleanor, you got $100 coming your way. So if you want to win or be entered, comment, subscribe to this channel. And we're going to pick every single month. We're picking new winners. They get a $100 gift card or whatever they want. $100 NFT, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever they want. We'll send it their way. So Eleanor, reach out to us, send us an email and we'll give that to you right away. All right. So let's dive into today's episode. This is all stemmed out of Jake Paul made a post on Instagram a little bit ago. And here is actually the post if you guys want to see it. So he goes, excited to finally launch the anti-fund VC with my co-founder, Jeffrey Wu to help the most ambitious startup founders build the next generation of consumer and e-commerce infrastructure. So you got the whole thing here. Hey, and he says this too, we've been working for a while and are excited to be backed by Mark Andreessen and Chris Dixon as our first LPs, which is, that's pretty significant to have Mark Andreessen and Chris Dixon as your first limited partners in a fund is huge. And I assume he's telling the truth. If he isn't, he's misguiding, misleading investors, could have some charges against him. So I'm guessing this is true. Hopefully it's true. He's telling the truth here, but that's pretty impressive to have your first LPs be those two guys. And he says for potential LPs, go to the anti-fund VC uh, link right here. So this is their new channel. They got 70,000 followers. And if you want to become an LP, bam, click on this. So I did a little digging. I walked through, actually, I read through all of their LPAs, PPMs, their white doc, all the stuff. I'm going to give you kind of the high level overview here of what they're doing and, you know, how celebrities are launching funds. We've actually seen this with a number of funds of people like, like Jake Paul that are going out and launching their own funds. We have people like A-Rod, Kobe Bryant. We have a number of other people in the past and currently launching funds. We want to do more videos on this. So inside of here, you can see they work through AngelList Venture. Okay. So AngelList is a, you guys have probably already know who AngelList is, but they recently launched a thing called Rolling Funds. And what Rolling Funds are is that they are funds. They kind of took a hybrid of an open-ended and a close-ended fund, put it together where investors can invest and it's on a subscription model. So they'll subscribe to the fund. And instead of a typical fund, you'll say, hey, I want to put down $500,000 as a capital commitment. And the fund manager can can call that capital whenever they want to. This model, AngelList says, we're gonna do a subscription model where, and in this case, back on the page, they wanna do $25,000 quarterly, okay? And so you're gonna do four quarters in a year, so $100,000 subscription is kind of their minimum of what they want. You can do more if you'd like, but they wanna do $25,000 quarterly as a subscription model. So you can just expect every quarter, you're gonna be paying these guys $25,000. Now, we did other videos on this actually angel list is rolling fund model. It's cool. It's, I don't think it's the greatest, most innovative thing there. Some people are like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. It's, it's, it's actually, it's pretty normal. I I don't see it as that great of a thing for investors. Um, it only works in a certain scenarios. Um, anyways, here we are though. They use angel list, by the way, angel list, if you're listening to this, I submitted an app, you have to submit an application to work with angel list. They take like, um, 0.25% every year as a fee to use their services. That's how they make money. So they have all these funds that work under them. They help list it. And this is the page they help kind of build for you guys and throw it up there to to help people subscribe. I submitted my application, never heard back. I don't know, maybe I'm not a big enough name yet. Maybe I don't have enough, whatever, clout to be as cool to have a, you know, like Dan Fleischman or a a Jake Paul to have a fund, but what the heck, AngelList. 
I want to be on. I wanted. To, I just wanted to see how they did it. I didn't. I wasn't actually gonna. Maybe they knew. I wasn't actually gonna launch one, but I wanted to see how they did it and put it together. I just like to run through people's funnels. Um. Anyways, they saw through me and they didn't give. They didn't ever get back to me. So there you go. <laughs> but on here, so back to the page here, back to the screenshot. You see, welcome to the Anti Fund Investment Fund. We're run by Jeffrey Wu and Jake Paul. Jake is an investor, entertainer, professional boxer. He's a top five global creator, media mogul, over 7 billion views across the world. He is, I didn't know this actually, Jake is one of the most searched people on Google for the past three years and has generated hundreds of millions of revenue through merchandise, brand, and content, pay-per-view buys. Pretty cool. Um, Jeff, his partner, seems like Jake's kind of the face and the flashy to get a lot of people in. And then Jeff seems like the the smart guy in the background. Um, Co-founder, he's done a ton of these incredible things. He's been on all these great, I won't won't say all this, but anyways, he went to uh, Stanford, um, all this great stuff. So they believe down here, they kind of start going through their thesis, which this is actually the nice thing about, I like this way of presenting a fund. You see here on AngelList, they just go through, this kind of a, you you don't see a big pitch deck and stuff. It's just kind of like, hey, this is what we believe in, this is what we're doing. So number one, they say, we believe the very best startup founders are rebels and iconoclasts I co class. Sorry to say that word. They want to partner with people like uh, Jake and Jeff. Um, We believe in the fast growing business model today are driven by internet culture and viral movements and the anti fund will drive superior investment returns. And then fourth, they say the earth is flat. So it sounds like they're having a lot of fun here (laughs) with their stuff, but I, I won't, I won't bore you with all this. The, the thesis of what they're saying is we're going to invest into early stage seed startups uh, maybe we can do series A, B's if we want, but they want to, they want to find really early stage companies. They want to invest in these companies and then also use Jake's platform to help promote these companies. That is the most common theme I see with all of these celebrity type of funds. They use the platform of the celebrity to influence and boost companies that they believe in. So, so they get essentially equity in a company that they boost. It's way better than a paid post. I mean, they get a partner with these companies and invest in these companies as a fund to do it, which is a really smart way. Actually, I was on the phone this week with another, I won't disclose his name, but he's got a few million subscribers on YouTube. Calls me up, says, Bridger, I love your, what you're teaching. I want to start a fund for the exact same purpose. We have all these, uh, they, they were in mo- kind of a mommy blogger space, all these mommy bloggers that love to hear our reviews on products. And yes, we can do an affiliate commission, but I would much rather invest in these companies. Can I put together a fund to invest in these companies and we'll use our platform to boost? And I said, 100%. This is what they're doing right here with Jake Paul's fund. This is exactly what they're doing. They're gonna try to identify great companies they can get into really early and then boost them. And uh, it's actually not a bad business model. You can see why Andreessen and Dixon decided to be early limited partners in this thing because... It's a, it, having that celebrity, it's like Oprah's favorite 100 things or whatever. Remember that back in the day, Oprah would do her 100 favorite things every Christmas. My mom would buy like everything she could on that list that she could afford at the time. Like everything, bam, bam, bam. Like she loved it, right? Because Oprah would promote them. If you can invest in there, it's even more lucrative. Now they come down here. They're going to write, they believe in writing hundred thousand to a million dollar check sizes. So, you know, relatively small in this space. Um, they want to do all this great stuff. These are, here's some of their past investments. None of these companies I've heard of levels, eight sleep, thriller ramp. Um, I don't know any of these companies, but, uh, you know, Jake's proven years of business success. Jeff's had amazing startup and ramp. And I think a lot of these investments came from, uh, Jeff, his partner, but, um, then they have testimonies at the bottom. It's actually, it's kind of cool. Something I learned from, Dan Young, who came on the show earlier, he's on the board of Intel, actually my partner in our new fund. He said, one of the most important things you can do is have testimonials for yourself. And I was like, what do you mean? It sounds kind of weird to have testimonials. He goes, this is what you do. If people, if you work with somebody, they really like you, hey, how can I give back? Or can I, can I help you out in any way? Just say, hey, if you can actually go on my LinkedIn and write me a review or a, a kind of an endorsement, that would mean the world to me. And if you can get a few high level people to write you endorsements on your LinkedIn. He goes, it actually goes a very long way. And he uses that a lot of times in, in like in our pitch deck, he has a few of those from really well-known names. You see that here. Okay. You see, um, Gary Vayner, Vaynerchuk has a testimonial about Jake Paul right here. You see, um, CEOs of companies that they've worked with writing testimonials for him. And it's pretty cool, right? To have testimony. I, didn't, I never even thought about that. Anyways, might be up your eyes. Just a little tip you guys can look at. They want to do, um, they launched this thing April 1st. 
They're going to do a 2% management fee, 20% carried interest, an angel fee or angel list takes an admin fee of 0.15% over the 10 year life of the fund. Um, they, uh, it's interesting GP commitment too. So they are going to, they're going to put in at least $10,000 a quarter, Jeff and Jake, which seems kind of small. I thought that was a little bit small, but, um, you know, anyways, and they're going to, but how they're going to do it. Number one is they're going to forego 80% of their management fees and the management fees are going to roll in to their own commitments. Does that make sense? So the management fee is going to come to them and they're, they're going to reinvest back in the fund, which I thought was kind of cool, an interesting way to do it. Um, additionally, I actually went through and read the LPA and PPM for this fund. The way, which most people won't do, and I'm going to give you the boilerplate of what they put in here. They did um, inside, so they actually set up a master partnership above their general partner and limited partnership. And actually the first page, and right here on the LPA, see anti-fund investment fund LP, right? A limited partnership agreement at the top. They talk about this master partnership they set up. So this is how they set it up. They set a master partnership above, and that master partnership can organize as many general partners and limited partners as it would like. You see this in a lot of big funds that are going to be launching multiple GPs and LPs. Uh, they will actually set up a master limited partnership with all these GPs below them and then limited partnerships below them and then management companies attached if they need them on the side. I actually read through these docs. I don't know who created these docs. They seemed very generic, uh, very just copy and paste. I it's Maybe AngelList gave them these and just popped in some names. That might be the case. I think AngelList does that when they do these kind of rolling funds. I'm not sure. Very simple documents though. Most of these documents are going to tell you, you can lose all your money. You can all these, you know, that's pretty much what they're saying. They're saying very similar things on most documents, but it was actually very generic. These guys can invest into pretty much anything they want. Now, a few questions I had originally when looking at these types of funds with AngelList, number one, you're subscribing to the fund. So you're going to be doing 25 grand a quarter in this case. Can you stop subscription? The answer is yes. Now, typically a fund sometimes will have different things. It looks like on this one, they say four quarters. They want you to at least do $100,000, but you can call them up and stop your subscription anytime and it will still secure your limited partnership position. And the idea of this is that a new chunk of change comes into your the fund manager's bank account every single quarter. And then they go through that quarter and deploy the capital and they take a new chunk and they deploy that capital every quarter and they deploy it in, in every quarter. That's how it typically works. The problem that I have with it is you see funds, they can do this already. If you need capital calls, you just call down the capital. You don't need to put it on a subscription. If you don't have good deals, let's say you, you know, Q2 of the year, you get a huge chunk of change and you actually can't find any good deals. Well, then Q3 comes along and bam, you get another chunk of change on top of the chunk of change you already haven't deployed. And now you got to look for even more deals. And if Q4 comes around, you have any, maybe you can't find any good deals. Shoot, now you're feeling pressure to deploy capital and you might deploy capital into maybe not as good of deals. In a typical close-ended or even open-ended model, you can have the capital in the investor's accounts. And if you don't have a good deal for two quarters, you just say, hey, we don't have a good deal for two quarters. You keep the money in your accounts. The liability is not on us. And once we have a good deal or a number of good deals lined up, we're going to call some capital down and we'll deploy that capital into these deals. That's the one holdup I have on this. You can unsubscribe it at, I think, any time. These guys, maybe after four quarters, you can unsubscribe. But um, actually, I really like the thesis though. I mean, I like the thesis of your partnering with a celebrity, a worldwide known celebrity that's going to boost these companies' products um, to a really high level. I like it. The only problem I might see is if they invest in too many companies, they can't boost that many companies at once. And some might fall through the cracks, but that's the, that's the truth with all venture capital type of investing. I actually kind of like it. I don't know much about, I, I did a little bit of research on Jeff Wu's LinkedIn. It looks like a really qualified guy. You know, looks like he does great things. But um, bam, there you have it. That's the review of Jake Paul's anti-fund. If you guys like this stuff, subscribe, comment below. We're gonna do those $100 giveaways. Let us know too if you have any other celebrities or other funds you'd like us to review. Some of them are easier than others to review, but this one actually was, I don't know, it was pretty fun. Pretty fun to go through and review the anti-fund uh, model. Uh, let us know below what you guys wanna see in the future and we'll see you on the next show.